Yo, yeah, what's up guys? My name is Severman and welcome back to another video on my channel. So next Friday I will be dropping yet another progressive house song and in that one I've used vocals from Splice in the break and I thought, you know, why not make a video about how to implement Splice vocals in a break or how, how to create a progressive house break around Splice vocals because I think that's what a lot of people use, Splice. And not everyone can afford a professional singer and songwriter, so I think that's a great way to um, yeah, show you what you can do with splice vocals or how you can work with them. So that's kind of what I will show you in this video, but um, yeah, let's dive right into it. If you've watched or listened to my Revealed X Minecraft set back in April, you probably already know this track because I premiered it in that set. So uh, yeah, I used the vocals in the second break only. So I have the first break instrumental and then I have the drop, second break and second drop. So on this video tutorial, we'll only focus on the second break and then I will make a separate video on the rest of the track, like how I made the drop and the, the first break, intro, outro, etc. build ups. So let me give you an overview of what the second break sounds like so that you know what we'll be talking about in this video. So let's go. So yeah, the vocals, they're from, from the Kara pack. Kara, I, Kara, I don't know. I, I've built the, the break around this vocal, which sounds like that if you play it yeah, like without the other elements. Take me higher, Take me higher off, the off the ground We're on fire And that's pretty much all we've got for the vocals. So we have eight bars that just repeat in this part right here. But what's different is that I have this harmony layer or this, this lower harmony double layer, whatever, which sounds like that. So this layer really helps to make the vocal just a little thicker after it's repeating and it also keeps it interesting because you're adding something to it and you're not just repeating it. And then in the following eight bars, what I did, I basically yeah, chopped up or like I didn't chop it up, but I just made a cut here so that I have the, the need you now part on like separately. And then I basically copy and pasted it to, to that point and then also at the end of um, this part. So in, in this part we basically have this um, kick drum, uh, kick bass beat, like break beat part. And then we drop into that hands up lead part with the, yeah, with the drop leads. But um, yeah, again I will explain the drop leads in the, yeah other tutorial that will come after the release of the track. So by the way, also uh, feel free to pre-save this track using the first link in the description, it really does help. So the vocal was already processed as you might be able to tell by looking at the waveform because it doesn't look like it has a lot of dynamic range, which means that it's already been compressed and stuff, but it still did some processing to really make the vocal sit nicely in my track. So let me show you the processing of the vocals real quick. 
It's nothing crazy. Like, you know me, I don't use a lot of fancy plugins because, well, basically, I just like to use the, the, the native FL Studio plugins because they absolutely do the work and I, I don't need any more fancy, fancy plugins for, yeah, or I didn't need more fancy plugins for, for this case. So, yeah, the first EQ that I have in this track is just a basic low and high cut. So, as I always do, I high cut my sounds at 16k hertz. And then I have the low cut set at around, what is it, like yeah, 160 hertz. And uh, one tip when it comes to low cutting vocals. So you don't want to actually take away from the actual vocals by low cutting them or when you low cut them. But the, the low cut is really just for getting rid of unwanted microphone rumble or any accidents that happened in the recording. So it's really just to make sure that there are like no background sounds that were caused by yeah, touching the, the microphone or by moving the microphone or whatever to really just make sure there are no annoying sounds in the in the recording. And uh, yeah, so that's basically all I have to say about like the, the low and high cut thing. Uh, then this one is muted actually, so I didn't end up using this one. So again, like the vocal was already processed, so I didn't need to do a whole lot of EQing or processing in general. So uh, yeah, then as always, we have like the P controller with the reverb. Yeah, I have the low cut set to 1K Hertz to get rid of the unwanted low muddiness in the reverb. And then the high cut I have is set to 10K Hertz. Um, then what I like to do on the vocals, I usually increase the damping in the Fruity Reverb too quite a bit because I feel like it adds um, a nice amount of freshness to the vocals, like kind of higher frequencies, which really helps to add some air to the reverb and it really kind of makes it pop in the mix as well. And then, yeah, what's probably most important is the decay time for the reverb and I have it set to 2.5 seconds in that case. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all about the reverb. Then I have another compressor on it. So again, the vocals were already compressed, uh, but I just wanted to compress them like slightly more to really make them sit nicely in my track. And then we have another fruity delay so with this one, I'm basically filling up the gaps that we have. So as you can see, like if you take a look at the, the waveform of the vocal, you can see here's a gap. Here you have a gap, then you have a small gap over here as well. Then here's another gap. And with the delay, you can really fill up those gaps if you have any in your vocal. So that's what it sounds like with the delay. And if I mute this one, you'll basically notice how the gaps are really empty. Take me higher off the ground. And again with the delay on. Take me higher off the ground. And uh, yeah, then we just have like a balance for volume automation. Um, and some, some side chain for, for the job. Um, yeah, but that's I'm pretty much it with the vocal processing. So let's actually head over to the instrumental part of the second break so that you know like uh, basically what's in the track beside the vocals. So um, yeah, let's scroll up a little bit. So we have quite a few FX sounds down here, but I will talk about those later. So um, let me start probably with, yeah, let me start with the, the bass line of the, of the break. So this one sounds like that. So this one is just like a Reese bass, a detuned saw bass from, from Nexus, I think. And what's important with this one is that I have a filter on it and this one makes sure we get rid of any higher mids and high frequencies in the bass lines to only have that nice warm bottom end of the bass line. And this is something which is really important when you want to yeah, work with vocals or when you want to implement vocals in your track. It's really important that you make sure that you have, that you create space for the vocals because the vocals, you know, they mainly sit in the mid range, obviously. So you don't want to have too many other sounds that play in that same way range that you have the vocals in. And a really easy but effective way to make sure sounds aren't clashing with your vocals is to use a low pass filter on your instrumental sounds, such as your bass line, but also on your chords, that's really important. So yeah, let me show you the chords. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, at the beginning, we really only have also those lower mids in the piano, also to get it out of the way of the vocals. Okay, so then I have this pattern in which I have like some type of variation of my melody. So to, to be precise, I, I um, basically looped up the, the first bar of the, my melody that I have in the track, but then like around the end, I kind of go back into the actual melody. So this I thought this creates some nice yeah, variation or also tension um, in the background by kind of looping up that first bar of the melody. So yeah, this, this pattern, it sounds like that. So again, as you can tell, there's a filter on it, which slowly opens up to also get it out of the way of the vocals. And then with this one, I also automated the dry level of the reverb. And I did this to really have um, this top piano in the background. So as you can see at the beginning, the, the dry level is actually at zero. So it sounds very wet. And this also helps to really get things in the background by adding a lot of like wet reverb, but reducing the dry amount. So then down here we have all of the FX sounds. And this is also a section of sounds that is really important because these sounds really help to make the transitions smooth. Like if you're transitioning from, from the drop into a break or if you're transitioning from a verse into a chorus or from a chorus into a build up or or build up into a drop. And I also have to really add some high end, especially in the drop. I, I always have quite a lot of like downlifters. I really have to add a lot of high end, which means energy to the drop. And yeah, generally these sounds really have to kind of glue everything together and make everything sound finished. So yeah, the FX sounds in this track, they, they sound like that. So I have a crash, which I have in a lot of my tracks, which I exported from my track called Humane. So we're so this right now is basically a transition into the second break. So yeah, we have this impact sound, then we have this downlifter sound, then we have this white noise type of downlifter, another impact sound. So these really help to kind of yeah transition into the second break. So let's check that out again. So without these sounds, we sound like that. It sounds super awkward, right? So you, you don't really hear those sounds in the mix, like you do hear them, but they're not too obvious if you get what I mean. So as you can see, these sounds are so important to, to really get those last 10, 20% out of your track. So then later on we have um, yeah, the stadium clap. So this is yeah, it's technically part of, of the drum section. Um, yeah, that's what it sounds like. So nothing special about that one. So then at this point we're dropping into this hands up part again. So let's check out this yeah, transition. So here again, we have the crash that I already showed you. And we have um, some cashmere FX sounds. So we have an impact, which I actually reversed to kind of help to soak into that yeah, next part, which is coming. Then we have yeah, this one as well, which is like reverse for, for like basically the same um, yeah, principle or to, to have the same effect. And we have this um, like sn sub snare. Then we have this impact, so this is basically that one, but it's not reversed. And then we have some more downlifter sounds, impact sounds, etc. white noise sweeps. And these FX sounds, they sound like that. Okay, but then down here I actually have some more patterns for the chords. So the, the piano that I showed you uh, before is not the only like chord layer that I have. Uh, but yeah, let me actually start um, like at the beginning of the break again. So here we have some, some strings. 
And for these, I used Flex from FL Studio. So it's got some really cool um, string presets that I like to use a lot. And also these are low pass using, yeah, low pass filter. <laughs> so you can really tell how I use a lot of low pass filters on, on my chords. Um, yeah, or in general on my like instrumental sounds in order to really create that space for the vocals, which I really need. And then again, in that hands up part, I have another pattern. And in this one, I basically added some staccato strings using this, what is it called? Like Vasilian Chamber Orchestra 2 plugin, uh, which is free by the way. I really like that one. It's really, really cool. I use that a lot of my tracks. And uh, yeah, the staccato strings, they sound like that. Um, so yeah, let me show you the rest of the sounds in, in the second break real quick. So there's not too much going on anymore. So this is just um, yeah, a marimba preset from, from the same plugin. And uh, yeah, then we have uh, some more drums. So I, this is like a tom, a tom, a tom sound from, from a reveal recordings pack, I think. I also use that one in, in the drop as well. Yeah, then obviously we also have the kick drum in the second break. So I really wanted to kind of push the track forward to really kind of keep the energy up in the second break. And one thing which I think is also worth mentioning with the kick drum is I have also a low pass filter on that one. Um, so yeah, the low pass filter is basically active whenever the, the kick comes in. But what's special is that I actually fade the filter out or that I open up the filter throughout the break. And then yeah, at this point, I basically have the kick fully in because we don't have the vocals in here. Yeah, except for the need you now part. But yeah, I think it creates a really nice um, break beat, really helps to kind of keep the energy up. And uh, yeah, so one more thing that we have is this uh, white noise thing, which I did, I think, in the, the three x oscillates probably. So that's pretty much it with the second break of this track. So once again, I will show you the leads and the other parts of the track in a separate video after the release of the song, which once again will be released next Friday on June 26th, I think it is. Let me double check that. 25th actually, so now 26th, 25th. Yeah, also once again, make sure to pre-save the song using the first link in the description. So yeah, that's pretty much it with this video. So make sure to leave a like if you like the video or if you like the song. Make sure to leave a comment with your feedback, subscribe if you haven't, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.